Seven o'clock. I'll like to convene the public hearing for the uh, let's see um, the, land um, use and development regulations. These were um, amendments to the most recent update of the uh, land use regulations. There are two amendments, and they both um, involve what used to be known as the worm on Crosstown Road. Um, the first was to amend the rural district, uh, section 2109, rural 218, district paragraph D, line 2 for the lot frontage to read, lot frontage 300 feet minimum from what was voted as 120 minimum. Uh, and the other amendment is to amend section 2110. Upland Conservation District, paragraph D, line two, lot frontage to read, lot frontage 400 feet minimum from the current 180 minimum. Um, the Planning Commission has had a public hearing on this and they believe that it con conforms with and furthers the goals and policies contained in the municipal plan including the effect of the proposal on the availability of safe and affordable housing. Any comments? We're in favor of it. <laughs> in favor of it? Okay. Absolutely. Any other comments from the board? This is going to be one short. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I feel like I should Public make hearing. something up. <laughs> Actually, the area that, at least in our area, the, the, the Niles 218 uh, uh, used to be classed as Highland Conservation and it was 300 feet. And everybody up there is 300 feet and when it got changed to 120, it would have really changed the nature of the neighborhood a lot. Uh, there are a couple of homes that, you know, the lots aren't 300 feet, but they pre-existed zoning. Yeah. The land's either ledge or wet. Just wouldn't support uh, a higher density. Uh, yeah. And this came up because um, at the select board public hearing, if you remember, um, there were concerns brought, but with the, the way the timing was for the vote and everything, yeah. it was tight. So. so everybody in the neighborhood up there is satisfied with this? Yeah, there was, there was um, the hell of a meeting actually before the vote, and I think probably nine neighbors showed up and they were all in favor. Apparently there were people that were in favor of the change, but they didn't show up to the meeting, they just weren't running, but yeah. there was, I think, eight, seven or eight? Yeah, there were. Eight. Seven or eight people that showed up that were, wanted to change back to the Highland Conservation Dimensions. Yeah. So if the select board has no objection, this would go to the clerk for ballot polls. Yep. And probably coincide with one of the other upcoming meetings. Let's hope so. Yeah. <laughs> we can do that by. Uh, uh, um, there's, a, there's a procedure that Rosemary has to do as far as so many days in advance and post the warning. And um, mm -hmm. so, but I imagine it will be in the next 30 to 60 days. Thank you for being here to bring yeah. your views forward. Sure. So. We can send this on with just a consensus, or we need to vote on. Um, it. Why don't you do a Why don't you do a motion just so that we have one? I'll entertain a motion to take in for uh, to pass the uh, proposed land changes to the land use and development regulations to the town clerk. I make a motion to propose the changes to the land use and development regulations and have it go forward to the clerk. Jeremy. Second. Although, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We can, now we will start the uh, regular select board meeting. Um, to my left is Flo Smith. Uh, Jeremy Hansen is here on speak on the phone and Dana Hadley and Diane Isabel are both here. Um, 
additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? I do have some additions, uh, Brad. Um, I would like to add, I forgot to put on the award of the lawn services um, contract. I'd like to add on to that. I'd like to add on um, some news about the hazard mitigation update that I'd like to talk to you about. And I would like to add a right of way permit um, application that we received today. And I thought there was something else. No, okay, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, public comment. Hearing none. Uh, Treasurer's report, Diane. Okay. I've sent out uh, 24 letters to residents that were being passed to and have been for over a year, and I hadn't received any money from them whatsoever. So I offered them a payment plan and some information so they'd get back in touch with me. So out of the 24, I had 15 that responded, and uh, most of them have either uh, either signed up to pay monthly, a couple of them have paid in full, and then others have made agreements with me. So I've only got nine at this point that have not, and so those I'll be sending letters to next week uh, to begin the tax sale process if I don't hear anything else. But at least I think we're getting moving on these. Were these agreements, Diane, so that people will be successful, in other words? Yes. That, yeah. Yes, so it would be month monthly agreements that I felt would be affordable, right. but within our terms. Yeah. So, And mo I've had, like I say, very good response from the people mm -hmm. that have you know, talked to me about it. And that's all I've got right now. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, Let's see here. Approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make a motion that we accept the approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. If there's no um, comment. Uh, the general fund accounts payable warrant number 19G22 with checks 19082 to 19105 in the amount of $25,162.73. The payroll warrant number is 19-22 for payroll from April 14, 2019 to April 27, 2019 in the amount of $40,275.65. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. And um, let's see here. Keith Paxton, Cornerstone Catering. Keith, Keith yeah. Come on out, Keith. Yeah. Thanks Good for being evening. here, Keith. Keith is here to speak to you about catering licenses uh, of possibly allowing the town clerk to approve them that would save the process of going to the board so i will let him state his case sure so um most of the towns that we work in throughout the state um you can go into the town clerks and they'll, they'll sign off on uh, generally most uh requests for catering which is the alcohol licensing for towns uh, when we started up in barry uh, they went through the same process. It was once we could go in front of city council and they had to approve it. And some, uh, I worked with them, kind of presented to them. They ended up changing their policies in Barry. So now Carol Dawes can go in and sign off on it. Same thing with Barry town, Barry town, the select board was the same thing. They, they don't meet very, you know, they don't meet often. And so what happens is if somebody was to contact me, say tomorrow and they were looking for a, a catering for something quick for this coming weekend. Mm -hmm. It makes it makes things difficult, or even next week if it was you know a funeral or, or something, just something was, that needed quicker turnaround time. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess all I was looking for is to see if uh, Berlin would consider maybe changing their policies to allow their town clerk to be able to sign off on uh, requests such as that. And what I would recommend is maybe following following along the lines of what this the state permits meaning for events of 250 people or smaller it's it's quite easy to, to kind of go through the state when you start getting into larger events like that 
they're looking for you know more security and for double barriers and things you know of that nature but i think what i'm was just wondering if berlin would consider is you know kind of adopting the same policies as some of the other towns around and maybe for events of you know 200 or less allowing the the clerk to be able to sign off on it this was not for licenses this just catering just permits. the catering aspects. strictly there it's a it's a one day permit that gets signed off by the town goes to the state the state and gets signed off on by the state which is really essentially signed off by the state liquor inspector for that area mm -hmm. i did speak with carol uh in barry and she does approve the catering ones if she does not know them she sends those to the council mm -hmm. um, or if it's a you know it's a new one they haven't had before or if there's something unusual mm -hmm. or if there's been a problem in the past right. um, so i don't i don't think you're going to make a decision tonight with the attendance we have but keith wanted to come in and chat with you about it mm -hmm. So this is just for food and alcohol? It's really the only thing I have to pull a permit for is for alcohol. Yeah. So for example, if you were to say, if we're having a surprise birthday party for your wife and you wanted to have beverage services, but you don't want, so you can do one of two things. You can provide the alcohol yourself and you can assume all the liability, or you can hire a company like us who has a specific catering license not any bar can do this or restaurant you have to have the specific license so we and then we come and you know we carry you know two million dollars worth of liability insurance we assume all the liability our staff is fully trained and certified by the state what would have to be done if we were to do this what would have to be done on the uh to change it um, you would, it would just require a vote by you authorizing the town clerk to have the authority to approve catering licenses. And has the board ever been asked to approve catering licenses not in since, the past? Not in, my, not in my tenure. Okay. Um, the catering license does say on it um, to be approved by the town clerk. And it's interesting because the board does not sign those. They sign licenses, but right. not, you know, it's just the clerk that signs it. Right. Um, and I spoke with Rosemary about it, and she was comfortable with it as long as, similar to what Carol does in, in Barrie, if, if she didn't know somebody mm -hmm. or they had never had one before. And we've had some, you know, that come, we don't know, they're from Randolph or someplace, yeah. um, you know, and I don't know who they are mm -hmm. either. Carol's um, process, as you explained, it sounds... I mean, I think, you know, it's really the the thing that as keith says what i think would be helpful to people is that if you do have a last minute thing we only meet first and third right. thursday um and as you know we have that license i had to call you all in for special meeting so um just to give you that to think about <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. I just think that we should definitely bring it before. Well, I think I should put it before. on the next meeting exactly. or something like that. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. That way, everyone will yeah. be in attendance, and we can all discuss it as a whole. And I would, and I would recommend putting, you know, from our my standpoint, I would recommend putting a uh, a limit on there too. You know, if I was if somebody was to come to you and say we're doing an event for 300 people, I would say that should absolutely go in in front of, you know, a select after board. After you get up to a certain number of people, don't you have to have uh, Facilities and everything else. All towns are different, and no, there, there's no state requirements for sanitation or anything like that. Really? Th that's that's not that is not a uh, the DLC. That's that's no. not a DLC thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that could be a town ordinance, but I've I've yet well like occupancy off, or something. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the biggest events we do is probably uh, like the Warren Fourth of July. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a it's mm -hmm. a large event, mm -hmm. but that's that's organized by the 4th of July committee who asks us to come in and has already been pre-approved by the town. And Good so point. I still go and... Yeah. We usually have things like Northfield Savings Bank having an event or... Majority or, of ours. Or one yeah. of the, you know, or something at the Grange. Uh, well, most of those, I mean, those are 
even the Northfield Savings Bank, I don't think there was probably 120 people there. Oh, I don't think so. I think it was like about 50 right. or something like that. Yeah. So those those are the ones that I'm I'm more you know kind of asking if you'd be willing to consider having the town clerk be able to kind of rubber stamp those and. Well, those smaller those smaller events are probably more common than the larger ones. Absolutely. Those majority of the ones that we do are smaller. Smaller. Yeah, what, 200 less. Less than 200. Absolutely. Yeah. Rarely do we do one that's no. over over 200. Yeah. Well, I have no objections to it, but... We're going to put it on the agenda yeah. for next time. Yeah. And, uh, I have no objections know. either. Yeah. I make a motion that we put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Jeremy? <laughs> okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And... We'll have it this uh, Great. In two weeks. Perfect. Thank yeah. you Thank so you much for much. being yeah. here. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Hi, Beth. Okay, Hi, Beth. Beth. Yeah. Come on up. You guys are running fast. Yeah, good timing, huh? Yeah. We're trying to get you out of here, Beth. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> no worries. Um, so my husband Dave and I are the tree wardens for the town, and we thought it would be good to revisit the whole issue with roadside trees and emerald ash borer with uh, new members on the select board and some provide some updates on where we're at. Um, we got approval from the select board uh, last, I don't um, know, several months ago, yeah. I guess, to conduct Almost a roadside spring, inventory yeah. of ash trees um, in the wake of emerald ash borer mm -hmm. in the area. Um, so if you're not familiar with emerald ash borer, let me know and I can tell you a little bit about that pest and why it's of concern um, for roadside trees. Mm -hmm. Do you want to run down? Are you? I, I know about them. And okay. I'm familiar. You're good. Okay, <laughs> cool. I won't waste your time on that. Okay. Quite the past. Yeah. They are. Um, so to d the state developed uh, inventory procedure and has a sort of master server that we've been using um, to gather information. So any town can make use of this inventory process. Um, it's uploaded onto a statewide database. Um, where we're able to interact with um, Elise, uh, the woman from the state, to get information back as it's uploaded. We have, um, we've had seven people working on the inventory to date. Um, we determined as a group how we were going to proceed with the inventory and what we decided on was measuring ash trees that were at least six inches in diameter um, and uh, making a distinction if there was a power line right of way or power line on the same side of the road that the ash tree was on. So there are places in town where there's power lines outside the town road right of way. We didn't pay attention to that. If the power line was on the other side of the road from where the ash tree was, you know, we didn't pay attention to that. Um, we also collected information on dead trees of any species that were at least 20 feet tall. We were out there collecting data. Anyhow, those are other risk trees. So we figured while we were there, we would collect that information. We measured from the center line of the road, 25 feet, center line of the traveled corridor, 25 feet either side to establish roughly a 50 foot right of way. Okay. To date, we're about half done, and we're over over a thousand trees. Um, on average, we're looking at about 35 trees per mile. Uh, but I, I, this is um, this is just to give you sort of a picture of density. Um, Crosstown Road has uh, quite a density. Crosstown Road is right here. Um, Berlin Pond Road has quite a density. Um, so this is just information in GIS that we can use to start to uh, prioritize how to, how to address this, how to visualize what's going on out there. And when it comes time to start making decisions, we can use this as a filter to help sort of visualize those. Was it in a perfect world that 
trees would be removed. Was that the is that the so the best? Um, the different towns are handling this different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, Montpelier is taking what, what we term a reactive approach. They're not moving, removing any trees until emerald ash borer has been identified in the tree. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit di different situation down there. They have roadside trees that have aesthetic value. We're a little bit more of a rural community. Northfield um, did sort of a preemptive removal where they, and I, I, the, their tree <laughs> warden is out of town. He'll be back in a couple weeks, but um, they actually had a a logger come in with a feller buncher. They'd shut down a section of road. They'd have the feller buncher come in. Are you familiar with this? No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You probably know more than I do then. Yeah, they, they've been doing that for a couple of years. Ago. Yeah, so they were removing all of the trees. Yeah, they're taking everything. Um, but the landowners have got to give them the okay to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, Rutland, uh, Rutland actually owns all the town roads, rights of way, so, and their, their uh, tree warden is also an arborist, so he, he took care of it for them. They didn't have the issue of landowners. So there's a lot of different ways to deal with it. Um, so in talking with other towns and what's going, you know, where they're at and the issues they're facing, there's a lot of towns that are kind of in the same boat. And we got a couple take-homes from that, those discussions. And one was a strong recommendation that we form a committee to deal specifically with um, uh, methods of control, whether it's preemptive removal, selective removal, whether the town road crew is going to do this, whether the town chooses to do nothing uh, and kind of deal with it as the trees are infested. Um, the other, and then, if removal is decided upon, how that's going to happen. There's got to be landowner notification, who gets the wood, what happens to the tops. So there's a lot of issues to think about to how, how to deal with that once, you know, a process is, or once a decision is made on how to, whether to cut or how to cut. Um, the other, the other take home we got was um, lots of uh, communication with taxpayers. Um, so I, I, uh, I would propose an offer that any time there's a town mailing going out to taxpayers, uh, Dave and I get sort of an advance notice and we will put something together um, and with your approval have that put in to communication. Um, once we get the inventory done, I'd also suggest that we offer a, a meeting, you know, a town meeting or gathering mm -hmm. or walk along a, a road to discuss the issues with any interested taxpayers, just to keep them mm -hmm. informed and um, understanding what all the issues are. Um, the other take home that we got from towns that are have made the decision to sort of move ahead in a systematic way is uh, some sort of incremental treatment, whether it's budgeting a certain amount of money a year, um, a certain section of road each year, a certain distance of road. Emerald ash borers in Montpelier and it's in Barrie. It's likely in Berlin. We haven't found it yet. Once a tree is infested, it dies within one to four years. Once the tree is dead, it fails from the base. They don't drop their limbs one at a time like a pine tree does. Once the tree is dead, you can't have anybody climb it. So automatically you have to have a ladder truck come in. So the cost of removal after a tree has failed is, or it dead, is um, three times higher than prior, uh, prior to the tree dying. Um, so anyhow, that just, that's just a real, a real quick update of where we're at. You know, we have more work to do. Um, I think we've hit, knock on wood, we've hit the, the roads that have the highest density of, of ash, but we've been surprised um, once we get out there and start actually looking at how much is there. You're meaning that they, they say anything about um, uh, landowner education on this? Or? Well, that's kind of what the, um, the frequent inf information going out to landowners. I'm, um, we're happy to post something on the town website if that's an appropriate mechanism for you know, for knowledge or if the, 
front porch forum, maybe. I don't, I, you know, I, we'll take your suggestions on that. We're happy to, to get the information out there and um, respond in a limited capacity to, you know, to questions, but. Um, we certainly could put it on the, the web page, and I think last year we mailed something we, we in did. the tax, With the tax bills. bills. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was also really thinking yeah. the Berlin mm -hmm. News to Knows that Corinne Stridesburg puts out too. That's, That's a great idea. Really, really right. well yeah, received. A lot of people read that. Yeah. They do. Okay, they do. Yeah. Um, and, and we certainly could put something in this year's tax bills. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's really the main mailing we have but that mm -hmm. goes to Everybody. the most people, I guess. Okay. Yeah. What was your finding in terms of the quantity of dead risks, risk trees that fell um, in that category? You know, it's really interesting. There's, uh, I, I didn't break that out as a percentage on that map, um, but if you look at it, the yellow dots are dead trees. Oh, okay. This not this is just something that we we've mm -hmm. been there, but there's no ash but the trees dotted on it. Ones. Okay. The, yeah, so it's mm -hmm. it's a, not a it's. I'm gonna say fifteen percent, something like mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. off the top of my head. The yellow dotted ones are more dead trees. Um, and and so again, uh, Dave and I sit around and talk about trees a lot. I guess, but um, we, we were we were mulling over if we were going to put a committee together, what would be you know sort of the logical people to have on that, and um, it made sense to us to have a select board member on the committee. Um, Ginger Anderson has been helping us out, and I would ask if she was interested in participating. She works for the state. She's also a forester, so she would have some of the perspective of, you know, from the state on what's going on. And then a, a representative on, from the road crew somehow, ultimately, they, you know, that's, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, they're gonna be very involved in this, so. When are you thinking that might get pulled together? Um, probably late, some, mid, mid to late summer, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like that. And it, um, yeah. so when, for, if decisions were going to be made, uh, to, to implement some sort of program next year, when, from your timeline, when does that need to be made? For instance, if money were going to be allocated, or re you know, time or resources well, would be empowered. Well, as far as money, we do the budget in October, November timeframe, okay. October, November, December, um, which doesn't take effect to the following July. Okay. So um, we're like 18 months, if you will, from the time we budget it to the time we're actually in that budget. And depending on how much, how many resources it is, I mean, there might be something we can do in the meantime. But okay. If it's if it's significant, obviously we haven't planned for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, maybe maybe August would be a good time to, to so, sure. get a committee together to start to right. think about the best way to tackle this. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So uh, I can check directly with Corinne. Uh, do you, um, would you like me to pass any correspondence that goes out to the public before you? Be I would like to know yeah. what it is in case yep. I get phone calls yep. about it. Yep. And I certainly could um, pass it on to Corinne if that saves you a step. Okay. E either way. All right. Um, yeah. That's excellent. And um, and how about on the um, and web? and and the web page? Yeah. We me. can take care of that okay. as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. And if you have a mailing that you'd like us to mail out with the. When, bills. when do they go out? They go out in July. Yeah, they go out in mid-July. So by the beginning of July, I'd have to have them. Okay. And I'd have to have like 1,700 of them. So, okay. Well, we could, you know, we yeah, could Yeah, but we could actually here. copy a lot. But, um, okay. And then whatever else you need for help. Okay. We'd be glad to. Keeping people informed of what's going on and what the issues are, and you know where the town's at with trying to figure out how to pursue. Sure. So, there is a uh, pesticides available for people that have trees in their yard that they would they want to save. Um, it's costly, so that would be another another thing if anybody was curious, you know, wanted to do that, but we'd have to kind of figure out. Could they give the pesticides to the tree before it's infected or no? They have to, yeah. Oh, it is before. Yeah, okay. yeah. and then every other year. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a treatment that they, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, ongoing. Yeah. Yeah, so. 
Good. Thank you very if much. I, if I can say something, the way that Northfield's doing that, it's not costing them no money. That's with Because you limb laws coming in with their fellow muncher. Yeah. And he has a contract with Burlington Electric for chips. So they're do they're they're doing the cutting and and chipping and all for free mm -hmm. because he's they're selling getting, the chips. He's right. selling the chips right. to Burlington Electric. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's I like know, his that's price. a good way to, yeah. Yeah. to do it, yeah. not cost the town. That's money. Bruce. Yeah. Oh, Bruce Lemoine. Yeah. What it is. I, yeah. All I know is I've seen him over there, and it's Lemoine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, Rex Barrett is their their tree warden. So I I love to understand more of how they did that, the time of year, and but you know how many like, trees or volume he needs. Like and, she says, they're taking everything. Yeah. You know, when you chip, you don't leave anything. No. But I don't know that he has to. That's that's there's yeah. Well, I guess I guess from what I've heard from them guys over there is is that he kind of wants to because to make it worth his time and money to run his equipment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, cheaper. plus the fact it's a shorter haul than where he... And what they do is, like Beth right. sh 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 was saying, they shut the road down and, and they just lay everything in the road and hook onto it and skitter and drag it up the road and run it through a chipper. Mm -hmm. So it's probably frozen winter. Uh, he's, yeah. he's over there right now. Is he really? Yep. Well, I see his rig on the barrels road. Huh. It's easier to skid on the road than in the woods right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Easier on the equipment. I don't know about the road, but yeah. Anyhow, any other questions or? No. Nope. Thank you for all your efforts. Yep. Yeah, thank you very much for coming in, Beth. Yep. <laughs> okay, Tim. What's I, up? If we could. Joe will talk about it, and that's... Come on up. Oh, yeah, oh that's on. the one you were adding? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut. No, that's all right. But <laughs> well, I know how long you would take, so I just thought I would... Oh, um, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make it short and sweet. No, you're going to make it long. long. long, long. Um, <laughs> this is a right-of-way permit to um, drill monitoring wells in the right-of-way in Payne Turnpike North at the Honda Garage. And yeah. I'll let you... Sure. Can so, one. so my name is Joe Hayes. I'm with ATC. We're an environmental engineering consulting firm for Bradford Oil Company, who is the responsible party for the old gas leak that was out there when the gas station was there. There was gas leak in the ground. Mm -hmm. And so we've been testing that for a few years now, and the Vermont DEC has asked now that we test across the road because one of the monitoring wells that we're testing where the old gas station is, that is um, right along, I'm trying to get my uh, orientation, but you know where the that side of the road where the gas station was, uh, has the highest level of contaminants in that one well. So they want to go across the road <coughs> to see if the gasoline has gone underneath the road onto the the Honda dealership property. On the so, east side of the road. Yeah, side. east side. Yeah. And so they've asked for three test borings. This is the Vermont DEC. Has asked for three test borings across the road from the old gas station convenience store. And then of the three, where we, if we find contamination over there, the one that has the highest levels of contamination, they want to put a well in, a monitoring well. It would be, you know, flush to the ground. It would come up, and they would have a protective road box over it, like a, you know, like a, you know, they call it like a water curb box. Yeah. And basically, that's what they've asked us to do. So that's what that permit is for us to. We want to try to keep the borings off the road in the grassy area. That's what we really want to do. And we've spray painted the three locations over there for dig safe. And we plan to have the town, you know, have meet someone from the town out there and the Berlin Water Department and the dig safe people because obviously you don't want to drill through anything underground, you know, any pipes or electricity or anything like yeah, that. Water line. Water line, yeah, mm -hmm. sewer, mm -hmm. sewer line. So mm -hmm. that's the plan. Always yeah. important to have dig safe and oh, yeah. we were we were uh, provided with um, the backup paperwork. Um, I'm confused. You said that you were, what was the first step before, so you know where to put this well? 
guess is what yep. I missed. So the, the DEC has asked in, in this site plan that, that we sent you right here, if we could just uh, refer to this. Uh, can I hold this up so everyone can sure. see this? So, uh, so here, there's the old Maplewoods convenience store over here. And the gasoline leaked on this side, and it's moving in this direction. Okay. So this particular monitoring well here, MW4, which is right on the edge of the road over here in the, in the grassy strip, has the highest levels of contaminant. The levels have actually dropped off quite a bit over the last several years, but this one happens to have the highest. So the Vermont DEC wants to know, has it moved under the road onto these properties over here? I think the, uh, I call it the Shaw's, kind of comes down here. Yes. And then you got the Honda dealership. So we've got three locations the state said drill test borings into the ground to see if any of these have any traces of gasoline in them. How far off the road are the, are the wells? They're only a couple feet off the corner of the, of the curb of the road onto the grass. I'm trying to think if there's no ditches down through there. Is no, there's it? a curb with catch basins all the way down through there. I did okay. see the catch basins right on the edge yeah. of the road. Yeah. yeah, And there could very well be water line or sewer line over in yeah, there. Yeah, there's too. sewer line sewer there line. and there's yes. the water lines there. Yeah. So we might have to shift these. Yeah. I mean, that's the idea. We're not going to drill here if there's if there's something underground here, like a pipe. We're going to we we move these that. into a safe, <laughs> safe location. True. Well, the, yeah. the new water line just runs uh, outside of that curb. I think it's just on, on the grassy area. Yeah. 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 So we may have area. to move further. How how far is the right of way? Do you know how far does that extend? Does it off, extend so many feet off center line of the road? Yeah. Usually 25, 25 feet. 25 feet generally. Uh, that's got a. That might I, be a I'd, lot bigger. Yeah, I think Payne Turnpike is bigger than 50 foot right away. I think it's 75 foot right away there. And so we might want to just confirm that with the town first. I'd like to know because if we end up on private property, then we've got to go to the private property owners and, and get permission. Right. I mean, if we're outside the right of way, we probably don't need your. Do we? Do we still need your if we're outside the right of way? No. Okay. No, so, then you're on your own. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's important. This whole dig safe and meeting with the town or you know sewer and water is important, so we can know where we can safely drill these test borings. Yeah. Um, but these are approximate locations right now that we have, but it'll depend on what, you know, what utilities are under the ground, and then we'll shift these around until we get a safe location. Well, I mean, the water system's only about four years old, so you should have a pretty good map of where that's placed. Yeah. I've got maps of that. Excellent. I think okay. we have good records yeah. of all those lines. So I'm not I sure about the sewer line. That, okay. that land above the Honda Garage, yep. the Shaw's driveway, Wayne Lamberton owns that. Oh, he does own that? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Yep. So if we're in, in, but the right of way would extend on his property mm -hmm. too, right? All the way up through. Yeah. Well, up to the drive, right? Um, Into the Shaw's. Yeah, but I think he owns after Shaw's too. After the, after the, yeah, because the he, bought, he bought that land. That swap? Yeah. Yeah, I think he owns the Shaw's driveway actually. <laughs> yeah. For some, yeah. I think so. Well, maybe we but ought to touch base with him. But we don't want anybody to be surprised yeah. when we do this. So we may curse. There's the there's a fire hydrant right there by I saw that, yeah. Right by Shaw's entrance. I, yeah. And that uh, water line is roughly right there. Yeah. So we do not want to drill into anything like yeah. that. So we're gonna to want to do the our sewer lines in something. the street. Mm -hmm. But, sewer lines in the street. But it goes out through by the Honda garage because it's got to go to the pumping station over there. Yeah. Okay. But you have some drawings and stuff I here. We can, in my office. Yeah. We'll, come, we'll send someone yeah. by to, yeah. to take a look at those. They could speak with Tom. He'll have he'll okay. be able to do that yeah. for you. But I'll speak. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. um, so what you needed tonight, you were going to start this soon. It's, it's next week. Whenever we get all the dig safe cleared out and all that stuff next week, we were... No, can dig, dig safe won't be able to locate that water line because it's plastic. Yeah, so is that the burl end? Well, it has or a tracer wire in it. Oh, it does, okay. So, they, so you got a tracer wire coming up to, to most all the shutoffs. They ran a tracer wire above the pipe. Okay, so they should be able to clamp onto that yeah. then and send a signal through that. They should be able to. Now, is the water 
department? Is that the town or that's is it Providence? Private? That's ours. So it's a yeah. Town. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. So we'll want to get that. I that we'll, uh, who should? So Tom would be the one we. Tom and Diane. Yeah. yeah. Tom and Diane. Okay. Yeah. And I'm Diane. Yeah. Okay, you're done. Okay. So, but yeah, Tom can pull the maps for you, and he would be able to show you where the sewer line is and okay. the water lines. Perfect. Because I don't yeah. know for sure where the sewer line goes. It's got to go right there through by the Honda Grot somewhere, because the pumping station's right out. It got to go there somehow. But yeah. and I don't know about any of the if there's any underground services for power. Okay, so we'll you know we'll we'll make okay. sure we we get that identified. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan, and then once we put that well in, we'll have to test it. So we'll come back um, and, and collect a sample of water from the well, have it analyzed, and we put a report together, and that goes to the Vermont DEC. And then based on what we find, they'll, they'll ask to maybe do more testing, or if they, they don't see much over there, they may be good with it, and then what eventually the wells have to be abandoned or closed out, so the state will require us to come back, fill them with grout, and pull the uh, protective casing out of the ground and, and patch it over. So that's ultimately what happens to these these gas station sites. They eventually get cleaned up, and then the wells get uh, abandoned, and, and the site gets actually closed. It's called a SMAC. Yep. The Vermont DEC calls the site management activity completed. So that's what. We're hoping will happen at some point in the near future. He has a completion date here, May 9th. Yeah, so that must be the day. That's the day that that's the target date of the drilling. So what day? Let's see. That would be today is the second. Right. So it's uh, next week Thursday. From Thursday. Thursday. Week from so that's today. the that's the yeah. target date to do the drilling, assuming we have clearance from sewer, water, electric, you know, before. And also what we do is we hand core with a hand auger five feet before we actually send the drill rig down through. And in the drill rig is a small, like a F-250, 350 type truck. It's not the huge water well drills that drill rigs that you mm -hmm. see. It's a smaller yeah. drill rig. And sometimes How far down do you go with the drill? We're, we're planning on 15 to 20 feet. Did you ever hit ledge? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We hope to find water before that, though, so yeah. we can put the well in. You know, because yeah. we typically don't drill into the bedrock. I mean, sometimes we have to if the state wants us to, but usually if there's enough water on top of the bedrock, that's where the gasoline's going to be. Yeah. If we find it over there. Yeah. And of course, it depends if there's a good layer of gravel for it to move through, or if it's clay down to the. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything's yeah. hell. I mean, you know, it's possible we find it and the state says we'll go a little further. So we have to put together yeah. another plan to go mm -hmm. further downhill. Right. You know, it depends on what we find over there in this first iteration. Okay. So we suggested that Joe come in and get the permit tonight because he wants to have it completed next week. So basically what you need is a motion to uh, approve uh, drilling these wells off of uh, the right of way. That's right. Yep. Bar to the permit for working the right of way. I second that motion. Um, let's add the stipulation that it, uh, as long as Dig Safe says it's on the, they can do it on the town property or town right of way. I, sec yeah. I second the motion um, as long as Dig Safe. I can't make a motion. I <laughs> know <laughs> you can't. Um, I basically second the motion with the caveat that Brad just explained about dig safe completing that portion and aspect. Okay. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, there you go. Great. Thank you for that, being here. I'll get you that paperwork. Tom will sign it tomorrow. And we'll okay. Perfect. Okay. No, you, you work with Joanna.
Yeah, she's yeah. the one that you know her. She's the one. Well, she called me, and I okay. I've been working late at night, so I couldn't get back to her, and I've been leaving at six in the morning. Okay. So I finally called her today. And okay, good. Yeah, so she she'll be the one that'll be back here looking at the maps, and she'll actually be out there overseeing the drilling. Johanna will. Good. Yeah, with our company. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Great. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, thank you. Good luck with your grilling. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Okay, Tim, what's up? Oh, I was told to come in about the truck. Well, we have three things for Tim. Um, and I think I'm going to ask if you would start with the garage heaters first. Um, we had talked about that last time, and I had asked if you would hold off on a decision so that I could get a third quote. I did not get a third quote. So that means I have, and I, I guess we've given it enough time. So we have two um, quotes. Um, and, uh, one of the quotes is from Bob Felch. Um, his quote, I believe, for two Modines, am I right on this? Replacing both furnaces. Yeah. was $5,133 for two. And then we had the quote from Gillespie. And I should have that in front of me, but I don't have it. Um, I think theirs was two, too. They had a quote for one, it was like forty four ninety, and then two was 7000 something. That was, the, the quote was... Um, seventy-one hundred dollars was for a new oil furnace. Oh. Okay. Okay. Once we we'll get Gillespie's quote, so we have it here. Yeah. Okay. Clear it up. I thought I had it. Sorry. It's alright. Because when when he was there scoping out the thing over there, he said it was going to take two. The uh, for the oil burners? No. Or just in general? Probably. Yeah. One of the oil furnaces is dead. Yeah. But both, I mean, the, the, uh, the both of the modine are going to be, if they're going to go, if you're going to go to propane, um, that's for the, that'll be for the two pro, uh, propane modines is 7,000, you said? Uh, or was that No, oil? Gillespie's gave us a quote for an oil furnace. Go back to staying the same as it is over there. Yeah. But he suggested to go to propane because it, it's cheaper. Is it propane or natural gas? Propane. Yeah. And um, another problem that we have is that, that our fuel tank over there for the furnaces is underground. Yeah. That would eliminate that because we got to have the state come in here shortly and we got to dig up our diesel fuel tank yeah. and have it clean so that we can bury it. And they figured that if we're going to do one, we might as well have them do them both while they're here. Because that tank has been in there since I was here in the 80s. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're looking at this guy that was just here putting a well in the well. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that I know that it's different with Bobby's quote and Gillespie's, Gillespie's quoted us 250 BTUs. And Bobby pulled this for three hundred and fifty, I think. That sounds like three. a good price. Fifty-one thirty-three for two. Well, that's going to be. Uh, that can't be two hundred and fifty. BTU. No, no. Two hundred and fifty thousand BTU. No, it's two hundred and fifty BTUs, but it's that's natural gas. And the reason that Bobby went with three hundred and fifty is is because. When you go to propane, it's not as much BTUs yep, as natural gas. So he said to to get 
the same heat that we're getting with them oil furnaces over there. You had to go to at least the 350. Yeah. Because you lose a percentage of your BTUs with propane uh -huh. from natural gas. Mm -hmm. also, well, how big a tank were they going to put in? Um, you must, you must a thousand gallon one, really. Because you get some problems with it not being able to uh, vaporize fast enough when it gets cold out. Well, I'm not having a very good success finding that quote, so maybe I'll have to put this till next meeting <laughs> so that you can. Well, we're not I using must, the furnace. Though. I must have it. Well, I did come on today. Filed in the yeah. wrong place. Yeah, hopefully you won't need to use it much more. Well, they say it's been such a long, week. hard winter, and we shouldn't even be having to put our heat on at this time of year. Unreal. Um, so I apologize. I, uh, what um, happens? I thought I had it here. Then they, Gillespie suggested that the, the oil tank here is on the ground too. Yeah. That they would put it next to the fence by the generator and they would suggest that within time here that you might want to switch this building to propane too because all you have to do is put a burner in the furnace. One 250,000 BTU propane fired Modine unit heater from Gillespie was $4,490. That was for one. Yeah, okay. Was there any discount for the two? <laughs> um, it it wasn't. There was, and as far as it was not a mathematical. Yeah, because we weren't. Yeah. We weren't talking of, of doing anything. Because the problem that we had was, is the furnace in the front part of the shop is the one that's bad. Yeah. I mean, it's really bad. Works harder too. Yeah. And because we we don't run the heat in the back part of the building yeah. that high. And now the, the one in the back part of the building is died. So Did each of them propose a time frame if they were selected? How soon no, they could? No, they, they did not. Um, but well, I don't think it's a long time. They could do it right now. now. Yeah. Yeah. Before winter. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, we don't need it now. Right. But we're going to have to do something before next winter. So. Mm -hmm better to get it done because if the, we put in the, of course Bobby doesn't sell propane so we're going to end up buying a propane from Gillespie because that's who we buy it from anyways. we got to dig through the yard there and dig over to the building and put the line underground. Any chance of firing the generator on propane too? Um, that's diesel, so I don't Yeah, know. I don't think our, we'd have to... This well, thing. no, some some diesels you just take and it's a nozzle on the intake and... I don't know how you do it. Usually the diesel fuel fires the propane. The propane... Uh, but I've been here seven years. That generator doesn't kick on often. <laughs> well, it runs every Tuesday morning for 15 minutes and then it's... It's, we've used it a few times with power outages since I've been here, but um, I bet they haven't put 100 gallons of fuel in it yeah. in seven years I've been here. So I mean, we it, did we did run it. It needs to be exercised. We don't use it enough, so yeah. Probably well, I can I can make it run and put, put it on the building on it because Wayne showed me how to do yeah. it. Yeah. So if, so if I feel that it needs to run, all I got to do is go over there. And switch it over and put the building on a load so it'll burn more fuel because yeah. you got you to keep the fuel treated because it sets so far along. So I was wondering if, it, if you were running on propane, maybe we should take and think if we're going to put it in tanks for propane, we've got a propane generator. Well, we have been told and I just well, remember that that generator is, we need to think about doing something with that generator and it's not eminent, but what is the so, age uh, of the current generator? It was a used generator. Came from the sewer plant when it was down um, Road. And I'm not sure how old it is, but yeah, it came from Barry Montpelier Road, mm -hmm. so it's probably 15 years old. It was and old. It was. But yeah. we, did, we, had, we had work done on it, and um, they, put, they put in a new heater element thing to, to keep the fuel, because that's why it wasn't starting. Yeah. Yeah. And they said it's in excellent shape. I mean, it's a, it's a, um, it's got Atlas four Chalmers engine. It's mm -hmm. got four or five hundred hours on it. 
Um, I don't know. I have to look. I haven't really paid much attention to it. But I mean, it's been serviced. The oil's been changed in it. And the filters and I mean, it runs good. We have been keeping an eye on it and keeping it up and making sure it runs every week. And yeah, it does every Tuesday morning. It yeah. runs for 15 minutes. Yeah. You can feel the building vibrate. <laughs> Puts us back on the yeah, end of for next race. week. I'm sorry yeah. about that. I'm trying to find it the minute the meeting's yeah. over, of course. Yeah. Well, not next week, but the week after. It'll be May 16th. Okay, well, that didn't work out so well. Let's try another one. Um, Let's go with paving extension. We, I had talked to you a little bit about that last week, and we had talked about. Um, extending the paving yeah. contract with Pike and they have given us the same price as last year. Went down. Went down? Yeah, it was 76 last year, this year it's 73. Um, if we stayed with them. 73 per ton. Yeah. And that's the best way to buy it. And instead of this fiasco that we went through last year, it's just buy it by the time and then go as far as it'll go. Yeah, exactly. Now this contract says um, for Partridge Farm and Industrial Avenue. Yeah, well that, he just measured it for me because I wanted to, I wanted to see what it was going to cost us to, to see if I could do both of those roads with, yep. with my budget. That's all that was for. Okay, so this isn't a contract that no. they need to approve. No, you're just wanting no, to I'd, assure him that you just want to. I just, just want to know if you. I want mean, to I don't. Know, I don't know what the cost of the pavement was or anything. So uh, he called me about something else, and I asked him if he would measure those two roads because those are two that I definitely paid this year. How far did your How far is your paving going to go? Oh, you only do both roads. Oh yeah, and then some. Okay. Plus, I have money left over in the paving. It, it shows in the book that we went over on paving, but we got 101,000. Well, it's the, it's the age old problem that we have with the budget. We put it up front and get it back later. You know, it's we get the grant, we have to show the expense that we mm -hmm. spent it, and then we, we do have the revenue on the other side. Uh, we can't take that revenue <coughs> money and offset the expense right. so that it looks like you have to just. So the expense will be. They call it gross budget. Right, exactly. The yeah, budget. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, if you were to look at our budget, we wouldn't have any money to pay things. Mm -hmm. um, we did get the Fisher Road grant. Grant. We got a hundred one thousand from that, and we had spent hundred twenty. Yeah, I was going to say six. 20, I think it was hundred twenty six or so. Yeah. So. That left, and you had 150 mm -hmm. in, in your budget. And I had some left over, I didn't spend it all last year. We didn't roll it over, we did not. Not last year. Well, we didn't we have any to roll over yet. last year, I don't think. Reserve. So, even if we had some from the previous year, we didn't reserve. No, we didn't have any left from the previous year. Okay. So, there's but, nothing in reserve. So, now that the grants came, that goes back into the pavement budget, doesn't it? The grant money? Um, it no, doesn't, it's, it's, yeah, it's that's what I was just trying to explain yeah, um, of how it works. So if I were to look at the budget. I think that is two, 204000 right, on page six. I am getting there slowly but surely. <laughs> uh, winter rose, asphalt, 204000 yeah. we spent. And so that means we're over our budget by fifty-four thousand, and we received a hundred one thousand in, in revenue. Mm -hmm. So we have just under fifty thousand, if mm -hmm. you were to think of it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Left in it, this, it will this year. This year's budget. In this year's budget. Yes, and then then in July we'll you'll have another hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Because the bridge at Lover's Lane has got to be resurfaced. That pavement's all. Yeah. And you want to roll this? Yeah, I wanted to roll, a, roll the it over. Because I would like 
to do some at the, down at the junction where by Capitol Steel. Right there by Capitol Steel. Is there a hole right there that's, this that's in collapsing? Yeah. 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 No, there's a there. hump there it's right there by the retaining wall. Right. 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 No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. There's that cement block. So just there. so that you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 It comes back yeah. in as revenue. Call itself. It's on the revenue side because obviously. But I mean, you, if you if you go along there, I think just just only one caller on that road. And it's right there, but even though it's in the way, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes. right in there, I don't know if it's, if the road is giving way toward um, cars or if it's just settling. Where I got the cones, you mean? Could be. Yeah, that's just settling. Okay. You know, I, I wanted to do some paving down there. And I want to fix down at the end where you go onto the dirt by um, right. Brussels. I want to dig that, cut that pavement back up by that last trailer. Yeah. And then raise the road up so that take that dip out of there because it goes down and then it goes up. So all that water sits right there all the time and you got massive potholes all the time. So I wanted to cut the pavement, tear it all out. It's pretty rough shape anyways. Raise the road up so it's level with those lawns, put a new culvert in there that goes across the road right there by Ruggles's and then pave a little bit further yep. towards Ruggles's driveway. Can't go too much further because we got some soft spots there in the spring of the year and I don't want people over there. So the question is, is the board going to extend the contract for pipe at $73 a ton? I make the motion that we extend the contract with pipe at $73, which is, uh, not $73, but $73 per ton versus $76 of last year, which is a cost savings. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So you can let your friend know? Yeah. Okay. And I talked with a uh, paid one. Pipe's not going to want to go do that bridge. That's just, you know, they Too small for them. Yeah, yeah. That's too small. Yeah. They, and, and another thing that I'd like to do if we have that surplus is pave this parking lot. This is getting pretty nasty. And does the town do anything with the Riverton Bridge or is that just state? That's state. Just state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I thought mess. it was just state, that's but I thought it was worth mentioning. No, I didn't think town got involved with that. People think we do. They call it. Well, a few people have out. mentioned it to me, and I told them that I was fairly certain it was strictly yeah, state. So state. I wanted the to only, clarify. The only bridge that we have that's paved is Lover's Lane. Lover's Lane. Okay. But that's a wood deck with pavement on top of it. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, now the, the highway truck. You had talked about a highway truck and you were saying that you were going to ask the board if they would, if they were going to buy a truck so you could order it now. Is that, yeah. is that like we did? If we don't order within the next couple months for next, yep. next year, we ain't getting it. What condition is, and, and where I'm coming from, Tim, is the budget was re is really hit hard. We bought we bought the oh, excavator. Oh. We bought the new trailer. Um, we do have two hundred thousand dollars in structures and equipment, and I've got Richardson Road facing us um, that I have to that has to get done, which is a two hundred thousand dollar job. Um, well, uh, what I mean is the truck need to be replaced by yes, 2013. Yep. We've already dumped a ton of money in it this winter. And now it's hoist is all pitted and oil is leaking out of it pretty good. We gotta put new wing cylinder on it. But we're gonna have to fix that before winter because the wing cylinder is shot. Um but we just dumped a ton of money into it. What would it cost to replace this wing cylinder? Well, I don't know. I'd have to call it. I mean, yeah. probably I mean, a couple thousand. If we if we put in even ten thousand, fifteen thousand to get through another year, is that reasonable? 
Well, we we are going to get through another year. We're, right. We're not going to get the truck, a new truck, until 2000, the fall of 2020. So um, we would be in another. We'd be in another. By 20 oh, I, I so you're not proposing 20. that we do it. I thought you were asking for this year. Well, I mean, if the we order it, if budget. we order it right now, order it. So that you be if, in the if if we order it right now, we're not going to see the truck until at least next February of 2020. We won't receive the truck until after July 1st, which will be 2020. FY21. 21. Yes. Wow. It's out there. <laughs> and do they require any prepayment no. when you order? No. And so you will have the old, the, the truck you have now, you'll have another run, year. You're going to run another winter with it. When you get you're this truck ahead. we're talking about, what would that, what would your oldest truck then be? If you replace the oldest one now? Uh, 15. 15. I'm trying to think here. So what you're saying is... We, if you order the truck, Clark's, we're going to buy it from Clark's because they have the state contract. And you know, they're, yeah. nobody's going to come close to even touch it. Excellent. Thank you. He said that they are so backed up right now. If, if we weren't to order it now, we wouldn't get the truck. I mean, if we wait until after like July or August, we're not going to see that truck until July, August of next year. Yeah. And then that means it's got to go and have a body and everything put on it. So then we're going to be into the winter yeah. of the 2021 budget year. Damstar is that far behind? Oh, he said it's just, they're just swamped. Help me understand this, Tim, because I'm having a little trouble. <laughs> Last year, about this time, we gave the heads up to Clark that we were going to buy a truck. And we got it in the summer. Yeah, but it was it was different then. Okay, that's, that's what you need to tell me. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get there. Yeah. See, we can order the truck on this. On this no, we, don't, we don't have to. We if they we order the truck now, we have have, don't have to give them any money. It, he said it'd probably be February maybe the first of March before they would even see it in Underhill. That's just the cabin chassis. That's the cabin chassis. So then then, then you gotta go out to bed I for the body and the plow and equipment. We would make sure we're not because and it's not voted on yet. He said that if, if a miracle was to happen and they had it done in June, excuse me, you don't need to buy it until after July 1st. Yeah. So then you'll be on the next. You'll be on the next year's budget. Mm -hmm. sure. How much is how much are those trucks going for on the state contract? Um, I don't know. I'm, he was really busy today. I talked to him, doing some quotes and stuff for Jeff Newton. Yeah. And uh, I really I don't know for sure. And outfitting. Ro outfit. Roughly, probably. I think the last one we paid 110000 for it. Yeah. So, somewhere in there. Yeah, and then the body was 70 something thousand, so yeah, we were at 165 for the whole thing. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And things don't go down in price over time. Mm. No, I just, uh, changing the subject, the grader broke down the other day. And we're not buying one of those either. <laughs> we lent it, that, it would go five miles an hour. Went into limp mode, they call yeah. it. Come back here to the shop. I call Cat. They sent a mechanic down. He plugged into it with his computer. And it was a sensor that controls the computer, telling it it's either low oil, there's no oil in the transmission, there's no oil in the engine, there's no antifreeze, does all of it. Here. The part was 160 bucks. The bill is almost twelve hundred. Yeah. So it's it's costly. Di diagnostic time takes. So 
I mean, I called him today and questioned it on him, and he says, well... Mostly labor. I mean, they had to come here to fix it. <laughs> we would yeah. be taking it up there would have cost us as much, mm -hmm. except for, I don't know, it was 300 and something dollars for travel time and, and, yeah. and whatever. But, I mean, it would have cost us more than that to get it there. Yeah. Maybe you got to get it back here. So they come in here to fix it, but I was shocked when I saw the bill. The part was $160 and the bill's almost $1,200. Yeah, but the trouble is that a lot of you gave it to me, but I'm a lot of those things, though the part is fairly inexpensive, getting to the damn starting thing. off. Oh, this was easy. It was right on top of the valve cover. Right, is that what yeah. you right on the top. It took him 15 minutes. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. I'll you, can always, you can always send it to me by email too, whichever you prefer. I can send it to you. Send it to me. Okay, so on the on the truck, um, I mean, you're gonna have to go out to bed with the body because there's three different body companies, and and that you know that's not a, none of them have a state contract. Yeah. So. So I have it. Okay. So, I mean, Thank you, Dana. We can do that. Yeah. Well, next what we'll, we'll do with uh, Dana, well, I think what we'll do is we'll put the truck off till next meeting and then we'll take it. When I think that's probably Justin, a good idea. Justin's here. Yeah. And okay. you can look through it a little bit. And now, the last truck that we traded, um, I think we got 50000 for it, or 55000 50. 50. Okay. But the one before that, we got 65 for it. Yeah. But the, th the thing of it is, is Clark's knows they work on them. So they know what condition. That truck that Gary had when he was here, that was junk from day one. We had more trouble with that truck, and then when it went off warranty, it cost us a lot of money. Yeah. So. And this truck has been good until this year. I mean, we had to put in a fan hub that was four grand, and we had to put in a new bed chain and new sprockets, and now we got to do a, something with a cylinder. But I'm going to do the cylinder myself. I'm not taking it to a box. I can buy a cylinder at Charlie Boys, cheap, and Fair it's cheap. No, and it's, yeah, and it's nothing for us. To, we can change it. Yeah, and I'm not sending it out to have it done. So and we need to have this conversation can, again in the fall budget for it. Yeah. I know you're saying you're going to... Yeah, uh, I, I want if we were to order it. Yeah, you know. if you would, we'll put that on next week's agenda. Okay. And, yeah. and ask the full board to vote on mm -hmm. that. And then, but we would, I hope there'd be a, we'd have to have a clause in there depending on funding because we haven't voted that money yet. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, okay. I know you do, I just have to say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I can tell you right now, if if something major was to happen and we couldn't buy it, uh, they're not going to hold you to it. Because they're, 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 sell, there. they're just selling them as fast as they get them in. Right. Well, okay then. Thank you, Tim. Coming in. And it's probably going to be, changing the subject again, it's probably going to be another... We'll see what the weather does this week, this coming week. I just watched okay. it before the meeting. Thank you, very Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Brown. Appreciate it. Yeah. Next see week. You tomorrow. So, so if we get some warm weather and some sun, they're going to dry out quick. But when you get into the other day, they're strong in the frost, but they're just not drying up. <laughs> yeah, down the, down the farm there, you're going around that corner there, the, into the big meadow. That's uh, <laughs> it's like being on ice. <laughs> Sleep. Oh, tonight? Yeah. Uh, he did yesterday. Yeah. Oh, but uh, surprisingly, it's, it's, it's... It'll dry out tomorrow. Well, it's supposed to rain again tomorrow afternoon. But, but it, it's Saturday, it's, Sunday, it's supposed to be amazing. Once you get out from that cold corner, the roads are pretty decent. Yeah. It's straightened right out. Okay, Tim. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. We'll see what we can do. Um, next on the agenda is a special event permit for Central Vermont Medical Center. Yes, this is, uh, and they have had this in the past. It's Central Vermont Medical Center for their walk and run five mile loop around the pond. Um, the police have been consulted. They're okay with it. It's to be held on 
June 15th. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, right in the middle, June 15th. And they have done this before. Uh, they have not asked to have this the fee waived. Um, I have not received a check yet, but I'm sure I will from Robert. And other than that, that's all I know. Move to approve the special event permit for CPMC. I second the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, can I ask one more thing before, sure. before I take off? For me to put up no parking signs out on Merle and Palm Road, do we have to have an ordinance? There's signs there, but they're old. No, you can, you can do maintenance without, a, without anything. Um, because the other day I was out there grading the backside of the pond. I came back and the people parked on top of my windrow. <laughs> there's so many people parking out there, there's no room. On, on uh, right here, right as you turn on the Brookfield. You mean beyond the current parking lot? Well, they built that new parking lot, and that's supposed to be for boat access. Yeah, and, boat yeah. Yeah. and nobody parks in there unless they got a boat or a canoe or something. Yeah. But that little area that they got to park there to walk, they they just there's no room. They're parking all the way down the side of the road out there now. And they're parking down in the, uh, in the city of Montpelier's pumping station or whatever that thing is in, in their door yard. And I, can't, I, I couldn't believe it. I came back around the corner there by the pumping station and there was cars parked on top of my windrow. I said, now, how the hell am I going to level this out? Unreal. Yeah. And I'd like to know if, if we have to, there, there's signs there that says no parking, but they're really faded. Yeah. But I don't know if there's an ordinance. In it. Well, I mean, because I'm, I would like the, to go out there. If and the tell signs, them. if the signs are up, there's an ordinance there. I would just take in uh, some new signs, new signs up. Towed at the owner's expense. Yeah. I think that area is covered in the ordinance. Um, and and the guys ice fishing this spring did the same thing to me. I had to get the cops out there. They weren't, they weren't out there on the ice very far, and I hollered to them and told them to move their rigs. They didn't just totally ignore me. It didn't take them long when the cop showed up with his little blue lights flashing and got on his loudspeaker and said, fellas, they were picking up their stuff and headed for their cars. Okay. Picture of myself from Junction, Brookfield Road. Okay, at, well, it's not quite the, the same place, but technically, yes, we probably should do an amendment to the ordinance, but who's to say if you put the sign up? I mean... You're just replacing the ordinance there. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> That's a little joke, Dana. Yeah. <laughs> on, on that road, does the right-of-way for the throughway and the... And, uh, Painter, like, do that? Do those meet? Mm -hmm. Well, they gotta overlap on to us. Yeah, I just wonder if there's, if there's well, some place we can put another parking area if that's getting that kind of use. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. You cannot believe the number of people that are out there. It weren't bad last year because they didn't they didn't want to go climb over the barricades and stuff on Mirror Lake Road. But since Mirror Lake's been back opened up, it's hmm. ungodly. I mean, just people walking. Yeah, but walking and bicycling, they bring bicycles and... But it's, it's not using the, the water, it's not using the pond itself, just using the road. I mean, the ones that are using the pond have been parking down in that new parking lot that Dubois yeah. built there. Well, I wonder if we could take and talk to the state and see about the feasibility of putting in a, an area there between the, the uh, fence and the... Oh, you ain't got room enough. You don't have enough no. room? No. Fence right tight to our road almost. Is it? On yeah. Payne Turnpike South? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I can hit it when I, if I'm winging with a greater yeah. idea. There's a lot of room there. Well, you have to widen it out so that people could. Well, a lot of it too is is if they just use common sense and park a little closer together yeah. and pull in a little bit further. Yeah. 
But I mean, they're parking in there like this, and people are parking behind the people that are already parked in there, yeah. out in the road. Well, if you, if you look at the way the road, the road curves away from the throughway toward the south, there's gonna be, there's gonna, it's gonna open up enough in there so that between the two right of ways you could put in a, uh, you know, even if it's only 20 by 40 or 50 area of gravel. Lot that we have now, is that in our right of way or is it on the city's land? It's in our right of way. It is in our right of way. Yeah, because the city wouldn't let them park there. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. 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 This right here, you, you could, it wouldn't be down there, but I mean, at least. And we can't, we can't, we can't make it longer because the pond comes back against that's the road. That's what I was calling that. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was wondering between the, th between the, between the road and uh, the throughway, if you could take and get uh, an area in there where you could have enough. I'd have to look at it. I don't quite know what it looks like. I mean, I know what it looks like, it's, but I don't know what the Well, the road follows is. the pond, and then yeah. the throughway goes up the yeah, hill a little bit. Yeah, I, I know so what you, you are, might have, but I'm might just have wondering what kind of space you have in there. Well, you yeah. should have, I mean, even if you could take and get a little triangular piece in there, you could put five, six cars. Or mm -hmm. At least get them off the. There is like a little pull off up there before yeah. that little driveway that yeah. goes up into that. Yeah. Whatever that lot yeah. is. And we own we own some land along the pond, but the trouble is it's so uh, it's such a drop down onto it that we couldn't do anything over yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, we you might be able to, you know where I am. Mm -hmm. There. Mm -hmm. I mean, although you have to educate is, people. The only problem is that whole side of the road's got catch basins. They're not culverts. Their catch basins and they're down, they sat down in. Oh. Mm -hmm. See, they did that when they built the throughway. Yeah. Wherever the, the state reconstructed that Berlin Pond part of that road yeah. mm -hmm. when they built the throughway and they put catch basins in there all the way down through okay. from where you're talking about that all the way back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So. Okay. Um, so let's see here. But I put up the mill parking sign. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Update on, yeah, update on the town totally center totally design, Nina. Yeah, um, we've been again, as I mentioned to you the other the other week. We're at this. Um, the town center is everyone is very excited for it. We've asked the mall to help finance it. Um, I'm in the same situation. If the money goes through our books we don't have the budget for it and it just makes us look like we've overspent the budget which technically we have um, even though it comes in on the, the revenue side from the if it doesn't go through a book that's one thing so we really need professional help um, there's been a lot of work done as far as mapping with it um, we've started to have meetings and but what I would like to do um, is to have a meeting with all the boards in town and just see where everyone stands in this town center. Are we going to pursue the town center or are we not going to pursue the town center? Um, it's a, in my opinion, it's the long range project I think would be good for the town. We've got that 99, um, new development, the 99 elderly housing going over there. Mm -hmm. With the town center, we would have more commercial real estate that came in, plus mixed use would have more tax base. We would have to take over that mall road. I'll be retired by then. You'll be, you'll be retired, and probably so will I, I'm still living. Um, but, you know, we'd have to, the plan would have to call out, we'd have to draw out what that's gonna look like as a town center. There's going to be expenses as far as the mall owns all that property, so I mean, we would have to do something. So in other words, I guess I've never uh, developed a town center before, so it's all new to me, but when the, when the mall came in and said, we want to apply for this, and I think we were all pretty naive at the time, we just thought it would be a lot easier, and I even think their consultant at the time didn't realize what an involved project it is. We have to do a few studies, it's beyond Tom and my expertise. Yeah. I think it's an excellent idea to yeah. pull the various boards together to have a but mutual think, collaboration yeah. discussion. Yeah, I mean, I just thought it might be a good idea and have, so that everyone knows, really understands what the project is and what it entails, 
how long it would take before we saw any um, uh, result of, of our investment, what type of investment it would be. Um, <laughs> We need a feasibility study. You know, it, it basically, basically it needs it, but we don't want to get in. We're at the point now that we have to start spending money, and we have no money to spend. Um, you know, the town center has been, the zoning's been done, the master plan's been done, and I guess this town center idea has been going on a lot longer than I've been here. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I don't. I think it's a good spot for the town center. If we have a town center, and I can see at some point, I can see it coming to fruition. The hospital would be involved. I mean, there's a lot of players. Uh, down Street was in this week. We talked about they're considering building a building over there for housing. Um, I've asked them what they could help us with. Could they help us with some professional help? Um, could they? help us write grants? Could they yeah. do things that we just don't have the expertise to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they said they would be willing to help us however, but again, nothing's committed and nothing's online. So um, that's where we are. And I was hoping maybe in two weeks, if we had like a, a meeting with all the boards, maybe even have it over at the uh, Grange. Um, or something like that. What do you think about that idea? Seems like a good, good venue. Can't hurt. I, I, yeah. Yes, Jeremy, did you say? Oh, I, I said I think it's a good idea. Oh, okay, thanks. Okay, well, I, I'm sorry to spend so many words saying nothing, but that is no, really... No, <laughs> it was good information. Thank you. I think, I think we really need to have everybody rowing in the same direction. Was there any other? The lawn service. Yes. We do need to. Um, I'm all at sixes and sevens tonight. OK. Last, at the last meeting, we opened the bids for the lawn service, and we've done a little research with them. Just to refresh your memory, Orange County was $2,000 for the season, additional work, $2,250 an hour. Kirkyard Services, $2,600 for the season, additional work would be $30 an hour. We've used both those vendors before. Jay Milne at Santa Sport Service in Barrie uh, is $2,100 with additional work at $25 an hour. Um, the question was with Orange County, they had talked about an automatic renewal of the contract, and I've talked with them, and we could get out of that any time. It's, it's not a binding thing. They are just giving us a two-year price of $2,000 for the season. Um, knowing that, I would recommend that the board choose Orange County Property Management. And you've been pleased with their services in the past, and no, no issues? No issues at all. They do here, uh, the park on Muzzy Road, the over at the Dog River Park, over next to the firehouse in Riverton, and they do the monument, the memorial monument on the corner. And their price was what? 2000 for the season. 2000 for the season. And we're talking May through... Well, the 24 September. an hour after that? And. Additional work, twenty-two fifty. I have had them do a few additional things, such as weeding out front, um, and I had them do a bushwhack. I think did I have them bushwhack? No, I did it. You did that. Okay. Um, so that really isn't a normal, a normal thing. I'm not spending all yeah. that much money on additional work. Given their past services and the recommendation from Dana Hadley, I recommend that we award the lawn services contract to Orange County with an automatic renewal at two thousand dollars for the season and twenty two fifty above that. And it's non binding. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 And was that all the additionals? That is, yeah. That oh, I had a no. I have hazard, hazard mitigation. mitigation. Hazard mitigation, and that is, if, if I can talk about it now, 
Um, I just wanted you to be aware that part of the update for the hazard mitigation, as you remember, we chose a consultant who is working with us to do this work, and he is going to be um, releasing a survey regarding hazard mitigation. This is kind of a standard part of the, the work that they do. They ask some questions, if you'd like to take a look at that, um, to get as much input as they can. So, I didn't want a survey going out if you didn't know about it. Did that come in hard copy or can you put it, put it in a, a digital file and send it to Jeremy? I can. Um, I can send it to Jeremy um, and I'll send it to I'll send it to you. Send a copy to all of us though, right? You know, I think. Did I send you one? No, no, no. Are you the consultant? What was his name? Um, I don't think I've sent it, but I'll send it to all of you. Okay, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I got it from the, the consultant himself. He sent it up to a whole bunch of people a day or two ago. Oh, he did as well. Yeah. So you may have it, Brad, but I'll send it to be I'm sure you yeah. have it. Thank you, Dean. He's very efficient, so sometimes it puts me in shame. Okay. Anything else? That's that's all we get for it. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, approval of select board minutes for 418 and 425. I make a motion that we accept the minutes of 418 and 425, and I just have a couple notations on the minutes for April 25th, just small item on page one, just removing a period after chair town. And on page three of three, I was just questioning, is that the right spelling for the ambulance report, the Barry town? Is that? Okay. Um, um, I haven't seen the ambulance report, so I wasn't sure if, if Barry town was the name of where the company that is, that is our ambulance service. I'm sorry. Okay, Hello, no uh, worries. Look, uh, oh, I see, Barry town, yeah. Um, so is that the name of the company that produces the It's the, city, it's the town of Barrie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So those are the only things. Other than that, I recommend that we approve both sets of minutes. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, administrator's report, Nina. I don't really have very much. I have talked to you about the um, Newtown Center designation. Um, as you know, Josh Walker is going to be coming to the board to talk about the contract on Black Road at some point. And okay. um, so that will be that will be coming up. He he wants to have wider what right away. Black Road. Uh, let's see. Round table full? I have nothing tonight. Thank you, though. Jeremy? Nope. All set? Uh, any executive session? No, not tonight. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I make the motion that we adjourn the select board meeting tonight. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned.